Okay, so welcome to the second video on joint distributions. Now, in the previous video, we examined a uh, joint uh, discrete distribution. Uh, in this video, we are going to examine a continuous version. And the easiest example is basically uh, if we have an abstract probability space here. Okay, and it can, and this is the experiment we're going to do. It consists of all outcomes of an experiment. And the experiment we're going to do is take a little square. And basically, I want uh, I want you to pick at random a point from that square, and uh, because it's at random, each point is equally likely to be picked. Uh, and uh, this obviously is a probability space. It consists of a sample space. It consists of a set of events, and it consists of a probability measure. Uh, but just as in the case of uh, the um, uh, the experiment where we had an interval and we were picking a single point. The probability uh, of uh, the events happening that you pick a single point, so if you put a single point, let's say this is point P, and you put it in a set by itself, uh, that is an event, but the probability, oh, I should never ever call your uh, call an outcome P, uh, so let's say Q, <laughs> Q, this is a point Q, uh, then the probability of this, uh, of this, um, uh, event, which is the singleton set containing this outcome Q, is actually equal to zero. Uh, so you need to take events which are whole subsets, you know, measurable subsets. Uh, well, and the, I mean that's measurable, so it's wrong to say that it's not measurable. Uh, but uh, you have to take big lumps, chunks, uh, chunks, rather than individual points, in order for the probability of those uh, events to actually be non-zero. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up two random variables on this. Uh, so we're going to firstly set up the random variable x, which is, if you think about, which is going to label uh, each each point, each point on this, um, each point in this square with its x coordinates. So this is going to take you onto values uh, in the interval zero to one, and basically it's going to uh, map all all points with the same x coordinate onto the same value in here so uh, the all the points on a vertical line these all these points here on this square that i've just drawn so this vertical line so let me get the uh, blue pen out so this line here all of these points have the same x coordinate so they're all going to be mapped onto the same point uh, in uh, this um, in this set of real numbers so this is a set of real numbers and uh, it's going to form a probability space as well and we want it to inherit the probability space structure of uh, this probability space uh, but it's not going to be a bijective map basically uh, all the vertical lines are going to be mapped, so all of these vertical lines here that I'm drawing are all going to be mapped, there. Oh, each one of them is going to be mapped onto an individual real number, but all the points in a vertical line are going to be mapped onto that same number. So uh, all the points on this real line, which forms the boundary over here, so this boundary here, uh, have, are going to be mapped onto zero, and all the points on this boundary, to the on the right boundary, are going to be mapped onto one by this random variable x. And uh, every point in between is going to be mapped onto its um, onto its uh, relative uh, proportion. So if you take a value there, which is say two thirds of the way along from here to here, it's going to be mapped onto two thirds of there. So your x coordinate you are going to get by uh, the proportion of the way you are uh, along the total uh, uh, total horizontal length of this square. Similarly, we're going to define another random variable y, which again is going to take values uh, between. Uh, 0 and 1, uh, but this time it's going to ascribe to every single point its y coordinate. Uh, so uh, the um, the uh, sets of points which are all going to be mapped onto the same y value are, in this case, they are horizontal lines. Uh, so all, all the points on this horizontal line now are going to be mapped onto a single y value. And again, uh, the top boundary, this boundary up here, is going to be mapped onto 1, and this boundary down here is going to be mapped onto 0. And all the points in between are going to be mapped onto uh, their relative proportion, the, uh, how high up they are as a uh, relative to the uh, total amount by which they can go up. Uh, so that's the random variable y. So it's uh, going to ascribe uh, the y coordinate to each of the points here. So overall, x and y together uh, will uniquely specify uh, your point on here, because every point, so if you take a little s value, so say some little point s, 
uh, every point S is going to have an X coordinate and it's going to have a Y coordinate and it's going to have a unique, it's not going to have a unique X coordinate and it's not going to have a unique Y coordinate uh, because it will share its Y coordinate with all the points that are on the uh, same horizontal line as it and it will share its X coordinate with all the points uh, on uh, the X, uh, on the uh, on the vertical line, uh, at the same vertical line as it. Uh, but its combination of X and Y will be unique, so each point will be specifically uh, specifically um, specifically given a pair of real numbers. So again, we could view this joint distribution. You can either view a joint distribution as being multiple random variables uh, assigned uh, to uh, assigned to a probability space, or you could view it as a joint distribution where we ascribe every where we ascribe every single point in this square not just a single real number now, but we ascribe it an ordered pair of real numbers. So we could view it as being mapped onto the uh, onto the uh, subset of R2, which is 0, 1, cross 0, 1. So the Cartesian product of the interval 0 to 1 with itself. We could view uh, that as uh, being what a joint random variable is, i.e. it's going to map every point onto an ordered pair of real numbers rather than just an individual uh, real number. Okay, so... Um, what we can ask is what is the probability distribution, what is the joint uh, probability distribution and just as in the case of um, continuous random variables we can no longer ascribe a probability mass function so instead what we can uh, do is we can ascribe a cumulative, we can uh, do a cumulative distribution function and the way that we do that, so I'll just get some more paper, okay so uh, if we uh, recall that our, we have this uh, this uh, experiment where we are picking a point from a uh, square box. So this is our square box, and we are ascribing to each of these um, each of these points in here an x uh, an x value uh, between uh, zero and one, and we are ascribing a y value as well, uh, which is bet again between zero and one. Okay. So what we can ask is uh, what is the probability of the event that little uh, that big X, this random variable big X, is less than or equal to some value little x, and y is less than or equal to some little value uh, little y little value y. So that is asking. Uh, this is an event basically because the event that x is less than or equal to x uh, is. Um, so that's all points in here. Uh, that corresponds to all points. So firstly, I just want to prove to you that x uh, less than or equal to x and y less than or equal to y is an event in this probability space. So this is our sample space uh, with uh, uh, a set of events and probability measure p. Okay, so I want to prove to you that this is an event. So because x is a random variable, x is less than or equal to x is an event itself. So x being less than or equal to some value x, where little x is an element of the real numbers, is an event. And uh, if x is actually between this interval 0, 1, uh, then if this was the value x here, let's say, uh, so uh, this is, um, so let's say it's 0 0.5, and it would be 0.5% the way around there. So it's all the points, uh, it's all the points in here which would be ascribed an x value less than or equal to x. Uh, so this would correspond to something that looks like this. Okay, in fact, let's not colour in with a horrible black pen. Let's colour in with a blue pen. So this would be the event uh, that x is less than or equal to x. Now, uh, the event that y is less than or equal to y is also an event. Uh, so that's the event. Uh, that's uh, that. Uh, remember, an event is a subset of your whole sample space. And so the event that y is less than or equal to y corresponds, is an event in here, but it's an event also in here. It has a corresponding event back here, which is uh, all the points that are ascribed a y value less than or equal to y. So if this is little y here, uh, then that will be, um, this event will be uh, all of these points here. And when we ask what is uh, the, what is the, why is the event x is less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to y. Why is that also an event? Uh, the reason is because x is less than or equal to x is an event, and y is less than or equal to y is an event in uh, in your original probability space. Well, it has a co well, it has a the pre-image of this under the um, under what I should really write here is I should write the inverse image. Well, actually no, that this notation is bad. This this really means. Um, the inverse image of the set um, uh, that the, there is an event back here which is 0 to x 
which is uh, the corresponding event back here. And what we really mean by x be big x being less than or equal to some little x that should be, uh, is we mean x inverse of this set 0 to x, uh, which is an event. By definition, if x is a random variable, then the inverse image of any event in here must be an event in here. And uh, the, by, the, by writing uh, x, big x is less than or equal to x, what we really mean is the inverse image of this event uh, in this abstract, uh, well, in this uh, real number probability space, uh, taken back into whatever it was uh, back in here. And similarly, uh, by y, big y being less than or equal to little y, what we really mean is y inverse of uh, the set 0 to y, um, which is uh, also an event in f. Now, if these two things are events in f, uh, then their intersection um, is also an event in F because by the axioms of sigma algebras, um, the set of events is a sigma algebra of subsets and uh, sigma algebras by our uh, one of the axioms of sigma algebra is that it's closed. Well, actually, uh, what the axioms of a sigma algebra are usually stated that uh, the empty set and the whole space are elements of the sigma algebra. Uh, the uh, it's closed under complements and it's closed under unions. But the closed under complements and the closed under unions combine uh, to give that it's closed under intersection. Uh, but intuitively, if uh, if you have two events, say um, if you have two events, then you can ask what is the Another event is that both of the events happen. That should also be an event. Uh, so um, y inverse 0, y is also an event. And uh, we denote this x is less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to y, where this comma is just a shorthand for this intersection sign here. OK, uh, so uh, intuitively what it is is if this is the line for y is less than or equal to y and this is the line for x is less than or equal to x, uh, then the um, event that x is less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to y uh, is uh, this event here, so this set here. Okay, so we can ask what is the probability of a set like that? And that uh, is uh, what the joint CDF, that is the concept of the joint CDF. Okay, so this would be given the symbol, this uh, probability that x is less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to little y would be given the symbol the CDF, the joint CDF of x and y as a function of little x and little y. So you give me any two values, little x and little y, I can work out what this is. Um, okay, and in this case, because we have assumed that uh, you're that you are picking the point in the square at random, uh, then. Uh, the uh, probability that you are going that x is less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to y, i.e., the probability of this of this uh, region here that I've shaded in pink, is just how big is this area uh, compared to the whole space? And of course, uh, it's going to be uh, the area of this is x times y, and then it's divided by uh, one, divided by one, which is the area of the whole square. Okay. Uh, so that is the probability that x is less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to y. So the cumulative distribution function is x, y. At least that works if x is less than or equal to... Well, if x is an element, that works if x is an element of 0 to 1 and y is an element of 0 to 1. If you are asking for numbers outside of those intervals, then it's going to change, obviously, and it's going to become more complicated. But really, that's the only place where we care about the uh, CDF. Uh, so that would be its CDF, at least, on the... Um, on the if you uh, Because this is now a two-dimensional function, so you can view it as a map from R2 onto... Um, you're going to map it onto uh, 0 to 1. So you can view uh, the joint CDF as being this sort of a map. And uh, what we've done is we've defined what the CDF is going to be uh, for this problem on this into on this little uh, portion of R two, which is zero one zero one, uh, which is this little square. You could call this the Cartesian product of the interval zero one uh, with itself. Okay, so that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll look at the uh, to uh, the concept of a joint PDF.